نحمد ہو نسلی علیہ رسول الکریم و نشد اللہ علیہ اللہ اللہ وحد ہو لا شریق علیہ و نشد اللہ محمد عبد ہو رسول ڈیئر اینڈ ریسپیکٹڈ ویوس السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ This Quranic program is presented to you by Adult Quranic Education Program, Srinagar. Alhamdulillah, we completed the first chapter of Quran, last time there's Al-Fatiha. Today, inshallah, we shall start the second chapter of Quran, that's Al-Baqarah. Al-Baqarah is the largest chapter of Quran. Before embark embarking on the systematic study of this largest or the biggest chapter of Quran, this Al-Baqarah, we need to know certain facts about this chapter. I hope that will be very useful for you, for beginners and for others too. I'll try to break it into points that makes things easier for us to understand and to memorize because we need to know. We are starting second chapter, but I told you, before embarking on the systematic study of second chapter Al-Baqarah of Quran, let us, we have to, we need to know certain points about it. Number one, very easy. Number one, this Al-Baqarah is the second chapter of Quran. How is it is to know, understand and memorize? Is the second chapter of Quran. Number two, Al-Baqarah is the largest or the longest chapter of Quran. It comprises 286 verses. As compared to seven verses of al it is two, superior to 286 verses. And 40 paragraphs or for rukus are paragraphs 40. And this chapter is superior over two and a half paras, because Quran has been divided into 30 equal parts. It's superior to two and a half paras. paras. This chapter is a Medanite chapter. That means it was revealed to Prophet, peace upon him, in Medina. Since it's the longest chapter of Quran, its revelation was completed in many years, not just in a month or two or six months or one year or two years. Its revelation is superb over many years. Al-Baqarah literally means cow. That doesn't mean there's some detailed account of cow, whether cow is halal or haram, prohibited or lawful or unlawful. It's not that. It's simply because we know in this chapter we shall see a story of cow, which inshallah we shall read soon. So verse number 67 to verse number 73, there is a story of a slaughter of a cow. It's based on this, that story, this chapter has been known, named as Al-Baqarah by Prophet Muhammad peace be upon this fifth point about this chapter. Since this chapter was revealed, it's a Medina chapter, that it was revealed to Prophet in Medina. Medina had, this, had a special situation and circumstances. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, started his prophetic mission in Mecca, right? Mecca. He was born there and at the age of 40 he started receiving revelations and he attained prophethood in Mecca. And after attaining prophethood, he spent 13 years in Mecca. And in Mecca, there were only two kinds of people, two groups of people. Number one, believers who believed in prophet, though they were in very less a number, in minority. And another group, overwhelming majority, they were polytheists, infidels, idolaters. This was the second. There were only two groups of people in Makkah. But after spending 13 years, when prophet made hijrah, that means he made migration, together with his companions, both the companions, he migrated from Makkah to Medina. But in Medina, situation was a bit different. In a of two, there are four groups of people. This is very essential to understand uh, this Al-Baqarah chapter. There were four groups of people. Number one, believers, of course believers. Some of them accompanied from Makkah to Medina, and some were believers in Medina, of Medina itself. Number two, politicians and, and idolaters. They were overwhelming majority in Medina too. That's the second. Third, for the first time, Muslims had to establish contact with some Jewish tribes which lived in the close vicinity of Medina, in Medina sub, uh, uh, suburbs. There were Jewish tribes like Banu Bani Kureza, Bani Kanuka, Banu Nazir, and Jews of Khabar. There was, so this was the third group, which was not in Mecca. This case was not in Mecca that way. This is the third 
that's uh, people of the book, that's Jews, Jewish tribes. And number four, the group also grew up in Medina. They were the hypocrites, whom we call munafikun, munafik. Hypocrites. Who apparently, with their verbal declarations, tried to pose themselves as Muslims before Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, and his worthy companions. But in the hearts of hearts, they were enemies from within. They were agents of anti-Islamic forces. They worked on the Jewish agenda. They had contacts with infidel polytheists. These munafikin or hypocrites were enemies from within. They wanted to destroy Islam from within. In short, I'm not explaining further. Why did I tell, raise this point here? In this chapter, we'll see mention of all these four groups, how they are addressed in this chapter, and how they are invited to the true faith of Islam. It is mentioned of these four people. And about this chapter, we have to know certain facts also. That in this chapter, since it's the longest chapter, spread over 286 verses or sentences, the whole Islam has been explained. This whole faith explained in this chapter. Everything, like Wa'aki Musala, firstly, belief in one God and worship Him alone, we see, Ya Yonna Subudu Rabbakum. Oh, people, worship your Lord, Allah Jai Khalakakum has created you. So, worship of one God, there's a basic teaching of Islam explained in this verse. Then, similarly, praying, you pray to Allah only, bow before Him only, we see, sorry, Al-Baqarah, time and again explained, wa yukimuna salah, wa akimu salah, wa atu zakah, and mention zakah also, the charity, how to help poor and needy, destitute widows and orphans. There is mention or promulgation of one of the basic teachings of Islam through this chapter, that is fasting. In Makkah, there was no definite law was not imposed about fasting. It was in Medina, through this chapter, Al-Baqarah, we see. It was number 183, promulgation of fasting, which was made obligation, obligatory. Ya it's verse number 183. Ya amanu, kama min tattakun. Oh, those who have believed. Fasting has been made incumbent upon you, obligatory upon you, as it was made obligated to people before you. So this is the verse through which this discourse starts from 183 about fasting, this divine injection. Then in this chapter we'll see also mention of Hajj. That's Hajj pilgrimage. It starts from verse number 196. Wa al It starts from this verse and continues for many verses about performance of Hajj pilgrimage. So this is very important. And in this chapter, there's mention of war. In Makkah, Muslims were not allowed to fight against their enemies. They were asked only to be patient, to show perseverance. But in Medina, when a small Islamic state was established, so and the Quraysh of Makkah, the enemies of faith, Time and again tried to invade Medina to finish Islam once for all. So in such circumstances, Muslims were allowed and then ordered to fight against these enemies. So this was war of defense, not an offense. That, that's in this chapter itself. We see in chapter, verse number 190, Quran says, In this chapter, Al-Baqarah, This course starts from here. It's not just one verse. Statement is taken forward also. Believers, fight in the way of God against those who have imposed fighting against you. But don't cross limits because Allah doesn't love the transgressors. This, in this chapter, this injunction. Similarly, prohibition of usury or interest. That's in this chapter, we see in this chapter. Verse number 278. When usury or interest was totally declared haram. Ya yul ladzina amunu taqullah wa dharu ma baqiya min riba in kuntu mu'mineen fa illam ta'falu fa'zanu bi harbi min Allah wa Rasuli. O true believers, O believers, fear Allah. Abandon 
this, uh, this system of usury. If you don't do it, then there's a declaration of war against you by Allah and His Messenger. So with this divine injection, which usually was prohibited once for all till doomsday. Similarly, in this chapter we'll find basic teachings about prohibition, not the, not, not the final prohibition, but the basics, just starting initial point about drinking and gambling. We see in verse number 219, 219. Yes, alone in the Khamer of Al Kul fima O Messenger of Allah, they are asking you what are the commandments about gambling and drinking. Tell them. Though there may be some benefits in these both gambling and drinking, but overall their sinful nature is overwhelming than their minor benefits. So this was just the beginning of final prohibition of drinking and gambling. This in chapter. Uh, in this chapter we'll see even the rights of orphans were highlighted. Well, how to treat orphans? It is verse number 220. And Quran says, Yes, Aluna kul islahu lahum khair. O messenger, they are asking you about uh, orphans, how to deal with them. Tell them, be kind to them, take care of them, behave properly with them, because they are your kith and kin. You have to take care. So it is in this chapter itself. Similarly, we see in this chapter uh, about Nikah, that's marriage, whom, with whom Nikah is uh, allowed in Islam and whom you cannot marry. We find it in chapter verse number two, eight, 221. Wala tankyul mushrikat hata yumin. Wala amatu mumitum khair mushrikatin wala wajibat kum. Don't marry polytheistic women until they believe. Uh, with this discourse continues. I'm just giving glimpses of this. There's also explanation of talaq. If uh, due to unavoidable, extreme unavoidable circumstances, husband and wife are not in a position to live together in peace and mutual harmony and reconciliation. How to go for separation in those extreme situations that we call talaq. This is in this chapter from verse number 228. Up to two, verse number 241, a detailed account. Starting with this statement, that those women who have been divorced, there's a waiting period of three months for them. Followed by the second verse, that's 227. Divorce is to be delivered twice. That either keep them with respect and honor. Or if you have to go for separation, that should be with two respects. That's in this chapter itself. We see in this chapter the ordinance about the revenge. If somebody is assassinated, somebody is killed, how to treat that assassin or a murderer, how to punish him. Verse number two, 178. Verse number 178, we see. Ya yul ladina amunu kutiba alaik mul kisasu fil katla al hur bil huri wal abd bil abd wal unsa bil unsa. O believers, the law of retribution has been made obligatory to you in the matters of murder. How a murder is to be punished, how it is to be, how it is to be dealt with, so that society is relieved from these vagabonds and with this, from these terror elements that's in this chapter itself. We see in this chapter even change of Qibla. Because, you know, in the initial stage, Muslims, and even including Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, himself, Muslims used to face towards Jerusalem, Bait al in Jerusalem, as Qibla, or the locus of prayers, we call it. And Muslims continued with this uh, uh, throughout Meccan stay in Mecca, 13 years. And even after they migrated to Medina, they continued to face in their salah and prayers towards Jerusalem. But it was in this chapter itself, in verse number 144, when Qibla, our locus of prayer, prayer was shifted from Jerusalem to Mecca. We see in Quran, in, in this chapter itself, verse number is in fact verse number 144. 
kad nara takulla bavajika fissama e falan waliya na ka kibla tan tarda ha fa wali wajaka shatal matsir haram wa hai suma kuntu fawlu wujukum shatra that o muhammad peace upon we watched your face you were you were facing towards heaven seeking divine guidance about kibla now we have decided it now we have to promulgate its ordinance to you now turn your face in prayers always towards kaaba henceforth and it's obligated on the believers this in this chapter itself all this and many more any many more about this chapter we know the long, longest verse of quran is in this chapter longest verse that's verse number 282 ya ayyul ladina amanu iza tadayantum bi dainin ila ajal faktubu this is a long very long verse i'm just quoting few words or true believers or real believers whenever you go for commercial tran- tran- transactions or debts or you borrow money from each other you should put it in black and white you should write down the document and it should be properly properly attested by the concerned this is verse number 282 the largest verse of quran and the last reveal was to prophet peace one means also in this chapter that was number 281 wa taqu yaman turja'una fi lillah thumma tuwafa kullu nafsi ma kasabat wa hum la yuzlamun this is the worst the last was revealed to black prophet peace be upon him out of few days prophet left this world to heavenly abode with this see in this chapter uh, as described with the prophet peace be upon him the greatest was greatest was of quran which was explained in hadith that is what god ayatul kursi verse of throne that's verse number 255 of this chapter verse number 255 allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum la ta'khudhuhu sunnatan wala naum that's the verse the strongest the uh, greatest was of quran as declared by prophet muhammad peace be upon him this this in this chapter we see in this chapter the mention of prophets starting from the creation of adam and eve that is in this chapter creation of adam and eve in verse number 30 is by scholar of book al malaikati inni ja'alun fil ardi khalifa recall when your lord said to the angels that i am going to create adam and send them him to this world so this means from verse number 30 to 39 means of creation of adam and eve and his confrontation with satan the iblis what happened that's in detail we shall read that too in this chapter we'll see the mention of moses musa and his confrontation with pharaoh pharaoh whom we call pharaoh that starts from verse number 40 ya bani israil thuni mati allati aramta alaykum wa afu bi ahdi uf bi ahdi kum wa ya farhabun or statement goes a long way wa najayna kum min ali fir'auna wa yasumuna kum su'a al-'adhab yudhabihuna abna'akum wa yastahyuna nisa'akum wa fi dhalikum bala min rabbikum aziz this is in the chapter story of moses and pharaoh this confrontation and how allah bestowed his mercies and favors upon children of israel that's just of jacob the followers of prophet moses or musa this in tab we see chapter of, in this chapter mention of abraham also at three places firstly in mention of abraham is in verse number 124 wa egypt la ibrahim rabbuhu bi kalimatin fa atamahun qala inni ja'aluka lin nasi imama and then we see in this chapter of mention of abraham again in verse number 258 alam tara ila ladhi haja ibrahim fi rabbihi that's the long was this the part of the verse was number it was number 258 where mention of abraham is again and in verse number 260 again mention of abraham why is kala ibrahim rabbi arini kayfa tuhil mauta qala awalam tu min qala bala bala kilayat min qalbi the bans of abraham again a very important important interesting and full of lesson stories about abraham in this chapter itself there is also mention detail mention and a beautiful advice given commandments about optional zakat that is sadqat and khairat it starts 
Once we embark on the systematic study of this chapter, second chapter of Quran, in next episode, inshallah ta'ala. Thank you very much. So nice of you. Wish you best of luck. But be connected with Quran. And whenever you, with this class started, you have to keep a copy of Quran in your hands on your Quran holder and focus your attention towards the verses which are under study on that very day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.